At Caraba's Italian Grill, people always seem to be saying, Wow! Especially now, because you can take home our delicious sautéed to order spaghetti and homemade meatballs made with our family recipe absolutely free. Homemade spaghetti and meatballs for free? Just wow! Order one of your Caraba's favorites, Chicken Brian, Chicken Marsala, Polo Rosa Maria, or our Chicken Trio, and take home made-from-scratch spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow night's dinner free? Wow! Hurry into Caraba's today and get free spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow. Limited time only, now through May 6th. Caraba's Italian Worth talking about blog talk radio Why I keep running 
Well, all right, all right, all right, all right, and all right again. Hello, hello, hello. Woo! Darling, all of my babies and my tea sippers out here in Blog Talk Radio land here in this country and abroad. Hello to my babies over there in Germany and in Italy and the Caribbean islands and all across the world, honey. It is another glorious Wednesday, my darlings, and you know what time it is. I hope you have all of your crumpets, babies. Because it's time to dish tea, and you're dishing tea, darlings, <laughs> with Big Meat. Hello, babies. I am. Honey, I have been, just been a productive something, uh, you know, for the last two weeks, honey. You know, it has just been that way, and uh, as I'm in the process of preparing myself to go to Detroit, Michigan, tomorrow, my hometown, um, I am, I, child, I'm, I'm just in a ray. If you see my house right now, honey, you swear Hurricane Katrina that came up through here, or at least she was about to share that bad. No, she's not that bad, maybe in certain areas, but she's not that bad. But, honey, she's getting there. So I'm in the middle of packing. I'm putting this together. Uh, I'm putting that together and, and, and getting ready for uh, just a wonderful time there in Detroit. So uh, that has been me. If you were here uh, over the holiday weekend down here in Atlanta, honey, if either you were partaking of Black Gay Pride or if you were part of Skatathon or if you were part of Dragon Con or if you were part of NASCAR or if you came down here to watch the, the college ball game, we had two different games child, going on at the same time. Atlanta was on lockdown. You understand me? You heard me? <laughs> However... It has been just one oh one oh. I want to thank all of you who came out and participated with the symposium that we did last Friday, the coming out process and understanding its effects on black, gay, uh, LGBT culture. That was a success for me. It was my first one here. And uh, it looks like we're going to be doing something with this on an ongoing basis. I will let you guys and keep you guys informed about that as the time moves on. But it was a wonderful success. Some wonderful information come up out of there. And a brotherhood was formed, you know. And uh, I really, really, really am thankful to all of my panelists who were there and um, uh, all of the guests. I mean, it was just a fantastic turnout. It was a fantastic turnout. So you will be able to catch that once we edit everything down over at AtlantaLGBT.com. That's AtlantaLGBT.com. Yes, we have we have audio and we do have video that's going to be coming for us. So, you know, I'm still learning how to work this equipment, child. So, <laughs> in working this equipment, I, uh, you'll understand, honey. You'll understand, okay? So we do have that coming, and um, I may have to edit that down and everything so that we can get the highlights of it because some you may not hear some people because we didn't have the accurate microphones and all of the, you know, just some of the technical stuff and some of the semantics that went on with that. So having said all that, it was a wonderful time. So, uh, yeah, the film festival was absolutely incredible, and uh, we had some things from that as well. So, um I did get a chance where I didn't meet her, but I saw her. She walked by me. She waved at me. I met, I met Brandy, and we met Sunshine Anderson. But, you know, like I said, I didn't get a chance to hide my I am. I was in the area, and they came by waving and carrying on. So that was cute. D Wood, honey, saw her. So, uh, you know, there's a number of children that were there. So it was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And um, just great, just great, okay? So today, honey, if you're interested in calling in, I wanted to comment on what we're going to be talking about today, honey. Feel free to call in at 347-205-9183. That's 347-205-9183. Yes, honey, the tea room is open. If you're listening by computer, you can go over there and join to the tea room. I'm in there by myself right now. Oh. <laughs> However, it is open, so if you feel free to go over there, honey, and uh, you could dish tea over there as well. I'll be bouncing back and forth to see if everybody put up comments or questions and things, and then we will make sure that your voice is heard too. Now, please be mindful that in order to comment over there, you have to create a profile page with Blog Talk Radio, just like with any other social network. It's free to do, so that way you can interact over there in the tea room, okay? So uh, let me put this disclaimer here for the tea room. Just, just remember 
that all of that, my darlings, uh, is we're in this social media network, so it is the written word. And a lot of times, you know, we react to it based on our own personal experiences when we think somebody may be trying to come out of a bag because of your perception of how, how you received the message. And it may not have been that way. Some, You know, we've lost the art of communication. And in that, you know, sometimes we, we – don't know how folks talk and don't know how they may have a little slant and a little curve on certain words to make it funny, to make it this, to make it that. So just when you're over there, dish your tea responsibly, please. Please remember, it's okay to disagree. Just don't be disagreeable. Okay, because if I come in and find out that you are, if you're cutting up, I'm going to cut you out. Okay, yes. I am. I make no qualms about that, okay? Also, let me put my disclaimer here that Dishing Tea with Big Meech is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matter that you hear on this program is not intended for children or anyone who's not mature or responsible enough to handle the subject matter, so your listening discretion is advised. I will repeat Dishing Tea with Big Meech is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matter that you hear on this program is not intended for children or anyone who is not mature or responsible enough to handle the situation at hand. So your listening discretion is advised. Honey, I have a potty mouth. I make no excuses for it. You know, y'all know my spiel, honey. I don't care. At this particular point, I don't care. So you are now warned because I don't know what bag I'm coming out of. Just know that I'm coming out of one. Uh, so, you know, just be prepared for it. So if you're at work, now is the time to, to turn your, your volume down to a respectful level and or put your headphones on. If you have children around, please go put them into the other room. You know, let them watch Dora, SpongeBob, Bert and Ernie, okay, somebody, honey, the Teletubbies, you know, somebody. Because now it's time for the grown and sexy mm, to become the seasoned and sophisticated. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get into this thing right here, right now. Okay. Hey, Road, I see you that came in. Thanks, sugar. I wrote to Stardom Radio, honey. She just celebrated her third anniversary last week. She was with us last week, and I wanted to make sure everything went over very well. And so you can catch her here on Blog Talk Radio as well. Road to Stardom. I love it. Okay. So uh, let me do this. Uh, I'm going to come back because while I'm in town, honey, uh, I'll let you know where you can come and see me and, and all of that. Plus, uh, for those of you who are listening, honey, I'm going to create four questions because i got four tickets I'm going to be giving away. I told you that before, but now that we're here, if you're going to be in the Detroit area, I want you to know we have four tickets that we're going to be giving away as long as you're going to answer these questions correctly. If you're going to answer them correctly, lovely. If not, I'm like, well, I work with you some kind of way. But they're going to be fairly, relatively easy. So if you know the show, this would be a piece of cake, okay? Just a piece of cake to go, or a crumpet to go with your tea. Uh. <laughs> so let me get through this. Okay, y'all know how I am with this opening. I have to do all of this because, you know, we have to set the tone and all of that. So for those of you who are trying to ask, why does child always say the same thing every week at the beginning part of this? This is called opening comments. You know, you have to set the tone and the stage and this, that, and the other. I know it wears my ass out, too. But, you know, it's protocol, <laughs> and we have to do that. So, and plus, it leads me into my com my first commercial break so that I can pay reverence to and, and homage to my sponsors. So, because without the sponsors, honey, there is no us. And, you know, I have to greatly appreciate them. So, let me get myself together. And when we come back from this commercial break, we're going to go right into this show, which I have creatively titled Talking by the Revolution. Mm. So, without any further ado, my darlings, let me take this little commercial break, and I'll be back with you in just a few moments, okay? All right. The Internet Sensation is now in print. Get your copy of the book that will not only change your life, but change your thinking as well. Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey is a compelling collection of blogs that have been the pinnacle of spiritual development and discernment for its author, Internet talk show host Big Meech. Not only does this body of work offer the insight from his life experiences, it provides the reader an amazing opportunity to go on a journey 
that will awaken insight into their own higher power while encouraging personal growth and spiritual development. With chapters such as, I cannot give you life, nor can I live it for you. Truth is a bad bitch. It's time for a career change. I am not your God. And in what love do you operate? You will be captivated and compelled to take the life lessons the book has to offer and apply them to your life. To get your copy today of Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey, go to www.dishingtea.com or you can find it on the web at www. Amazon.com or if you prefer an ebook, find it at www.smashwords.com Awakenings Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey Are you ready? Are you ready for the journey? Trig Laboratories manufactures premium sexual wellness and consumer health care products and is the parent company of Wet International Incorporated, one of the world's best-selling lines of personal lubricants and intimacy products. We carry a large variety of personal and flavored lubricants, flavored heating massage lotions, and aromatherapy heating massage oils. Whether you need a little or a lot, Wet has you covered. Our line of high quality, innovative, and unique products are formulated using only the finest ingredients at our FDA approved facility, meeting the strictest manufacturing standards. Wet is available worldwide at specialty stores and online retailers and at pharmacies nationwide. For more information or to find a retailer near you, Log on to www.stayswetlonger.com. Trig Laboratories. We create fun, quality, trusted products to innovate your intimacy. Take what's there 
And yes, we are. We are back talking about a revolution, my darlings. Sorry about the hiccup, honey. I'm sitting up here on this computer. I popped and jumped and this, that, and the other. I had to restart the song. So forgive the hiccups, child. Forgive the hiccups. It happens from time to time. So we're going to keep moving. And, my darlings, yes, uh, tea sippers, as you all know and have heard, I will be in Detroit this weekend to celebrate and perform at the Five More Artists Detroit, an evening of art, jazz, and theater. And today's show is dedicated to dishing all the tea about what's tea and what is in store, what, what is going to be on the, the precipice of uh, this historic event, okay? We're going to tell you who's coming out and what you can expect and take advantage of the evening. Artistic Director Peter Jackson will be dishing to you about how this came into fruition and how he has built his legacy throughout the years. Knowing that this year the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History will benefit from part of the proceeds, we will explore why this event is significant to the world of art. Okay, so uh, we do. We are expecting some of the artists to call to call in later on, and I'm going to let you. I'm going to surprise you when they come on in. I won't tell you who they are just yet, uh, but we're going to tell you who is all going to be on the show. Okay, so without any further ado, we're going to get right into this and start talking about artistic expression with the one and only. This is Mr. Peter Jackson. Hello there, my darling. Hey, Big Me. What's going on, baby? Oh, you got it. You got it. And won't more of it, honey. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Thank okay. you so much for having me on the show today. Oh, well, well darling, everybody who, who have not caught your voice by now, y'all do know that uh, this is Peter Jackson of Pharaoh's Treasure Box, who happens to be one of our gracious sponsors here with Dishing Tea with Big Meat. So to have you come on and to talk about this particular event, honey, is not only a pleasure for me, but, child, now if I get a little personal, honey, please, I'm working the show, honey. We we help put this together. So that way, um, you know, it's just all about branding and making sure that, that we just take care of one another as the world is supposed to revolve around in that particular space. So, Well, let me just have, say this. In addition to being... Uh, one of the sponsors of Dishing Tea, I'm also your number one fan. So I'm excited <laughs> to be here today. <laughs> I'm okay. very excited to be here. <laughs> okay, no, Kathy Bates me now. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you know, let's get into this. Because as you've heard, everybody, honey, today's show is dedicated to this, and I've got to get packing. So once we get through with this, I've got to pack, I've got to shave, and carry on. I've got a couple of appointments that I have to keep because I have to bring things with me. And if you don't know about traveling and trying to perform and traveling, especially now the airlines are charging for bags. I wasn't trying to have two damn bags, but I got to check two bags, child. Shit, that's another $60 both ways. Damn. Anyway, let's get into this. Let's start. Let's go right from the beginning and talk, tell everybody exactly what Five More Artists is all about. Well, uh, Five More Artists is basically a uh, platform to expose the uh, local artists, uh, in addition to exposing the local artists, we also, from time to time, feature the world-renowned artists as well. Um, but it's basically designed to be uh, an, ele- an elegant platform uh, to expose uh, Detroit's artists. Uh, that's where we're located currently, but we do uh, hope to advance ourselves and begin to travel the show uh, within the next year or so. Um, mm. In addition uh, to showcasing the artists, we feature uh, jazz, live jazz bands, again, from the local jazz bands to the world-renowned jazz bands. And we've actually been very blessed uh, when it comes to uh, the entertainment that we are able to offer. Uh, last year, we featured a band called d Lee 3, uh, which were actually members of the jazz great Girl Clues Band. Mm. And they put they put uh, 
three pieces together. Uh, it was um, David Lee, Mr. David Lee was the spearhead of it, uh, Damon Warmack, uh, and Mr. Ron Otis, and they called themselves D. Lee Three. A wonderful, wonderful band. We had a great experience um, for uh, Five Mo 2012, and we expect to have an either, even greater experience uh, in 2013. Uh, we've also had, as part of our jazz entertainment, Miss Helen Gilbert and the Jazz Ensemble, uh, who happens to be the mother and a jazz great and legend in her own, uh, Nikki Gilbert. All right. Uh, Diva. So we have been blessed uh, with the caliber of entertainment that we've been able to bring our guests. Um, the host and MC of the show is Mr. Jesse Peck, who happens to be uh, one of the members of the Legendary Spinners. Uh, our mistress of ceremonies this year is Chandra Tipler, who uh, is an actress and singer. Uh, she's currently starring in Hairspray. Uh, in Canton, Michigan. So shout out to Sandra. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had uh, Broadway entertainer Brent D. Van, uh, who is a wonderful singer and dancer. Uh, so we've had a, a just uh, a wonderful lineup of entertainment that we offer to our guests affordably. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, for well, affordably. Now, now this year. Our featured band is Daryl Matthews of the Platters and the Starship. So we're expecting a fantastic array of music uh, for this year's show. I heard that. And now, it's been a while since I have been able to come out and participate. That's why I'm very excited to uh, make sure that I am there this year because, as you guys know, it's been about three years since I've been home, and I usually go home to help put all this together, but y'all know I've been having uh, bouts and health issues and things that have pre prevented me from doing so. So this year going home is going to be a remarkable experience for me because – it's my first time back, and also uh, I am also I put together the theater portion of the event. We have an evening of art, jazz, and theater, as we want to make sure that this event culminates a full uh, cultural experience in the evening. So, this year uh, we're going to put on an excerpt from my original piece called "No Time for the Pain." Now we put it on last year. Uh, a one excerpt from it, but this year, honey, we're going to put on a, another excerpt from it, and it's going to give us uh, a look into the play itself as we're preparing to bring the play into the play into full fruition. And so I'm excited because I'm going to be there to be hands on with it and to actually see the work start to unfold for the first time. So I'm very excited about that. Um, well, let me just say that that our guests are very excited. Uh, to have you back, you know, I've I've had a lot of people say to me, "Oh, uh, Big Beach isn't going to make it this time." Oh, well, I don't want to get a ticket then. Oh you know, wow! <laughs> uh, of, course, of course, jokingly. However, you have been really missed uh, over the past few years, and we are excited to have you back. We definitely are excited. Oh well, praise the Lord, honey, and I'm coming in in addition to. Um, to putting on the the play, I'm going to be uh, my I'm going to be presenting a, a new piece myself from uh, my second book that I'm working on. So uh, this is going to be really, 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 really uh, special for me because it's going to be a lot of firsts. So I'm and and with this cause going to the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, you know. Uh, I, wow, I I think the timing on this is absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. So now let's go into uh, understanding, when we say an evening of art, jazz, and theater, how did you come up with this particular concept, and why did you want uh, this to be a full experience like this? Well, uh, my vision initially was uh, to, to go into business, um, the vision was a supper club where I would feature artists, uh, have a rotation of artwork every month, uh, feature different uh, cuisines, 
from um, around the world, pretty much, uh, as well as offer live jazz, uh, dancing, and just basically uh, a theater and a, a complete cultural experience. Well, um, I wasn't able to open the supper club like I wanted to do, so I did the next best thing and uh, began Five More Artists where I offered all of those things that you would get if you came to the supper club for one low price. Okay. So we're offering arts, jazz, theater. Uh, we have a DJ that also comes in, and we let him kind of just have at it towards the end of the night. And, baby, when I tell you, he gets to spinning and we get to hustling and bustling. And it's just, a, <laughs> it's just a wonderful, wonderful time. So you get dinner, dancing, you're exposed to art and wonderful artists uh, where you get to meet them up close and personal, uh, theater, and live jazz. What more could you ask for? Okay, now that there is a complete and, evening. Yes, not to mention great food on top okay. of that. Now, let me tell y'all something. Now, y'all know since I done had this damn surgery, I can't eat nothing, right? Well, not like I want to. And the the caterer that has been doing this for the last eight years, let, mm. and my mama was there the last time I was there, honey. I was, <laughs> because that girl sat up there and put her toe in that stuff, baby. I was like, Miss Thing. And I had to go find her. I was like, see, if my mother's sitting right here, you're going to make me hit her. Be like, okay, girl, uh-uh, uh-uh. And, yeah, well, you know, and, huh? It's definitely go. two things that, that our guests remember. Whenever I run across someone who has been a part of the show, they always remember Big Meach and the food. <laughs> Okay, the hard. If they remember that, it's because I was carrying around a plate, honey. <laughs> that shout out to CJ Catering. Thank you, baby. I love you. Okay, so you know, with that, um, let let me go here because I'm 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 saying that in fun about the food or whatever, but that there happens to be a cultural experience for us, you know, to make sure that there's good food, good music, uh, and good presentation. Um, but let's go into understanding the the mission of what uh, Five More Artists is about as far as, you know, making sure that you donate to different charities and this, that, and the other. Explain that and then also go into this year's charity. Okay. Well, um, I've been brought up to believe that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And certainly with Detroit – uh, going through the supposed bankruptcy uh, and the things that we have been going through here since my relocation from California uh, eight years ago, I thought that one of the things that, that we need to do as a people uh, is support one another, and we certainly lack in that. So I decided that whatever I did, uh, whatever, if, I, if I'm selling work uh, through a gallery or whatnot, um, I always donate a portion of the proceeds to charity. I just feel like I have to give. That's my calling. Um, and having said that, uh, this year's uh, charity that we're donating to, we always select a different charity each year. We call it the Artist Charity. And this year, the charity happens to be the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Uh, we are very excited and pleased to have them come on board and to be working uh, with them, and uh, certainly excited to be able to donate as much money as we possibly can donate, <coughs> excuse me, so that they continue to do and provide the services that they provide. All right. All right, all right. Now, this year we're going for the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Wow, what a blessed honor, number one, yeah. to, to be incorporated with them. Number two, just to know that 
you know, you are an art and jazz and theater piece and being able to connect to the art world in this particular arena. You know, how? what does that do for you? And then explain the need for that particular charity. Um, well, again, I'm I'm very excited um, to to uh, have been selected. You know, um, it, it it basically came uh, overnight. So I would say it's it's God's plan. You know, it was God's plan. We had a, a charity that we had uh, selected. Unfortunately, but fortunately, that charity declined. So I was in somewhat of a jam and. One of uh, I was talking with one of our artists who uh, I've been working with for years. She volunteers at the Charles Wright Museum, and she says to me, well, have you thought about the museum? And I said, certainly I've thought about the museum. Who wouldn't think about the museum? But do you think that they would really entertain me? And uh, so she uh, gave me a contact person over there who I contacted and sent uh, information about five more artists. He responded immediately, uh, was very excited about the show and what it is that I'm trying to do in exposing uh, Detroit's artists and musicians, poets. Um, And um, the ball just started rolling. I was put in touch with uh, his right-hand man, uh, Mr. Drake Pfeiffer, who I've been working with um, to make sure that everything runs uh, smoothly. And um, we're just very excited uh, to have the Charles H. Wright on board this year. All right, all right. Let me take a commercial break right here. Uh, and when we come back, 313 651, I see you have your hand up. I'm coming to you right when we come back from this commercial break. Now, before we go, into it. I'm gonna leave you I'm gonna give you this question. I want you to sit down and think about it. Because uh coming into this, you know, a lot of people when they hear art or whatever, a lot of people don't get into you like discussion of it. If you was a singer or something right now or whatever, folks would be like, Oh, okay, you know, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. You know, I can put you on the spot and say, Okay, sing something to make the kids happy. But when it comes down to art you know, because that's a visual presentation or whatever, uh, folks may not be so forthcoming. So what has been some of the challenges that you have been facing as far as getting the art world its credibility and get, and, and and building its integrity? Think about that. When we come back, we'll go into that. So hold on for uh, just a few moments, children. We'll be right back after these few words. Trade Day Management and Publicity Firm, an Atlanta-based PR production and management consultancy firm specializing in aggressive publicity and exposure campaigns, artist development, leveraging mutually beneficial relationships, and brokering deal with integrity. At Trade Day Management, enjoy a touch of Southern hospitality with a universal appeal. For all of your public relations and entertainment management needs, contact Travion Davenport at 678 573-3088. That's 678-523-3088. Or email at tradeaypr at gmail.com. That's tradeay, T-R-E-A-D-A-Y-P-R at gmail.com. Trade Day Management and Publicity Firm. Each of Vidal, Couture, Eacham, Vidal, Couture. Enjoy high fashion with luxurious twist. Step into the future with fresh, innovative couture. Design. By Miss Nietzsche DeVale Michi DeVale For more information Contact Michi At 313-996-3000 313 
996-9807 or go to Facebook and go to facebook.com forward slash Michi DeVale that's M-I-C-H-I-E-E-D-E-V-A-L-E Michi DeVale Ejum Vidal Couture Tea time? How many lumps do you want in your tea? Give me what you got! It's Dish and Tea with Big Meat. Big Meat! Kelly, I just wanted to wish Big Meech a happy fourth anniversary for Dish and Tea. Like that show, man. I had a good time on the show. Hopefully, I can get back on there again soon. Dish and that tea. For sure. Happy anniversary, my friend. Okay, and we are back. Again, I'm having another hiccup glitch because I am looking for something in my queue that loaded up and I cannot find it. So, having said that, let me do this and uh, get back into today's show. All right. Pete, wait a minute. Here we go. There we go. You there? Yes, I'm here. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, let's go back into this. The question that I posed uh, in front of the break was, you know, being from the art community, you know, it's very difficult to uh, get folks interested in the art world or, you know, to keep the integrity of art because it's so subjective. What have been some of the struggles you've had in keeping your integrity with this and keeping everything together? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, one of the obstacles that I personally had to get over uh, was doubt. Doubting Mm. myself as an artist. Um, having uh, viewed some of the work of the uh, great artists and world-renowned artists such as Charles Bibbs and John Holyfield, Annie Lee, uh, and several others, um, I began to have doubts in my work. But slowly but surely, after submitting work to different galleries and to different shows for exhibits and being accepted, I began to not doubt myself um, looking at some of the the artwork and saying, oh, wow, that's just absolutely amazing. Oh, but look at this. This isn't so amazing, you know, uh, when it came to my... But then I had to realize that my work was amazing, and what made it amazing was the fact that it was mine. That each and every of us has God-given gifts and talents, and each of those gifts and talents are different. I'm not a Charles Fields. I'm not an Annie Lee, but I certainly am a Peter Jackson. Uh, okay, right, and, right, and right. With that, and that's what I focus on uh, when meeting uh, new artists who are emerging artists coming out uh, who haven't really done a lot of shows, and, and they're doubting themselves. And um, so I consider myself to be uh, an exhibiting artist and an artist advocate. I certainly um, promote non-doubt. You know, we we do what we do. Um, not everybody likes work from the world-renowned artists, you know, and not everybody is going to like my work. However, what makes it unique, like I said before, it's my gift and it's my way of telling my story. My work is based on my life, uh, both the jubilations and the trials. And trust me, there has been jubilations and there has been trials. <laughs> okay. 
probably more trials is in jubilation. However, uh, that is what my work is based on. It gives me uh, an opportunity to tell my story. Um, as far as our culture goes, I know for me, growing up, I always believed that art was unaffordable, that in order to, to have artwork, beautiful artwork, you had to be rich. And if you weren't rich, you weren't going to have your home graced with beautiful artwork. However, becoming an artist, I discovered that that's not necessarily true. There are hundreds of wonderful artists who are not world-renowned who produce some fantastic work, um, and their work is affordable. I've run across pieces where, you know, they were marked at $30 for an original piece. Oh, my. Okay. To get, to get a world-renowned original, you're paying thousands of dollars. But this work is just as good, and that's what I focus on with Five More Artists and my own company. Well, both are my companies, uh, but through my artwork, uh, Farrell's Treasure Box, is the art of affordability. We want to make art affordable to everyone, not just the rich. Uh, okay. Now, so how about have that? Been, have been some of the obstacles that I have personally uh, overcome when I uh, seek out artists to showcase. I do seek out those artists who have affordable works so that our guests are able to come uh, purchase those works and then a percentage uh, from the sale of all of the artwork from our five more artist shows is also donated to uh, the specified charity, which in this case we have stated is the Charles H. Wright Museum this year. So in addition to uh, a portion of the ticket sales, they also receive a portion uh, of the artist's work. So we encourage uh, everyone who comes out, uh, please support the artists as well as the vendors that we have featured at our show. Oh, okay. All righty then. Okay, well, let me go here because we have this call. There's been 313-651, 313-651. I'm coming to you right now. Hello there, my darling. You're dishing tea with Big Meach. Hello. Hello, Big Meach. Big Meach, how are you? I'm great. Who am I speaking with? This is Freddie Renee. I'll be part of the Hi, how are you? I am everything, and everything is me. I'm just hey, enough here to get a cue you in. Thank I am you. just about to cue you in, and I will start to play the song first, not knowing that this was you on the line. Yeah, However, since this is you, for those of you who who are underwear, Freddie Renee will be performing at Five More Artists this year. And she's going to come on in and do her thing, honey. So why don't we do this? You give us a little bit about you now, and then after you finish that, then I'm going to go into this song here called Glad I Know, and then we're going to go continue on. So give us a, a little bit of your background, darling. Well, I am a native of Detroit. Um, I was singing with my sisters and my mom as a young child, and um, as I got older, um, I've been singing background with um, a couple groups, a Whitfield Music Group, and I decided, well, the Lord afforded me an opportunity to be an independent artist, so here I am, and um, just singing some contemporary gospel and a little bit of jazz background. I'll, I'll just say playing around with jazz, so I love it. Um, uh, listening to Kirk Whalen and Rochelle Farrell and Kevin Whalen and Ben Tankard. So. Oh, okay, the heavyweights. Yep. Okay, the heavyweights. You said, oh, the Tankards and the Whalers. How do you have Miss Rochelle? A girl, Rochelle Farrell ain't nobody's joke, how do you? Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go into this um, real cutely. And uh, we're going to make this happen in just a few seconds. So I, you know what? Every time I do something important, I always have to deal with a lot of mishaps. And I call myself, you know, having this all together. I done did this, baby. 
we're going into this. Okay, glad I know. All right, I'm really, really glad I know, honey. Awesome. <laughs> well, all right, all right. I could hear a lot of Denise Williams in you, honey. Denise Williams, and 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 I'm not sure if you know this girl. Her name is Nikki Richards. Um, she's a Broadway singer. But you guys, you guys sound and have that same genre of music, musical taste or whatever, and that style. Yes, lovely. Lovely, love Nikki. In fact, she was a star search winner. I don't know how old you are. That may be a little before your time. <laughs> don't reveal. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, 
you know, coming in into the fold uh, uh, of five more artists and things and, and becoming an independent artist, um, you know, give us give us your perspective on the whole idea of the independent uh, arena, because basically uh, what what Peter has explained about him building his own business is just that, becoming an independent artist, making a platform for other independent artists to come together. So uh, what ha- what has been your perspective about this business and having to be independent? Well, it's really exciting, and it's a lot of work. It's, it has been a tedious journey, and yet fun. Um, there has been some doubt, but then the prayer, um, the prayer just overshadows all of it, and then the support system that I get from mm-hmm. family and friends and pastor. And so you just have to persevere and just, uh, move on. Um, I'm learning a lot as I go, and um, as Peter said too, the jubilation and the trials for his art um, is similar as um, a singer as well. So, mm-hmm. but I'm enjoying it and learning a lot. I'm, I'm running to a lot of people who are excited, and I'm really excited about five more artists. Um, when I went into Joe's gallery. They had um, put me up as in the Avenue of Fashion. They had uh, Jazz on the Ave. So mm-hmm. they performed there, and it was exciting. And they were telling me about five more artists. So I, I spoke with Peter. He's a very nice man. And um, so I'm just excited to, to do a piece there and to see more art. Um, I really like abstract art myself. Okay, okay. So, I love abstract because it's up to it's all up to the interpretation of of the beholder. You know, they always say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and at the same time, you know, that's what abstract gives us. It gives you that that element there to where, um, you know, you can it, it's it's a different interpretation for everyone. I love that. You know, I love that. All right. Now, um, coming in as a woman in this business, and I and I like asking this question of women because business is, has always been so male dominated, and now that women are are taking a stronghold in business, what has been some of the lessons that you've learned that, of course, are universal lessons, but as a woman, it just made much more of an impact dealing with an a male dominated culture. Um, just mostly the trust. Um, mm. Trust is a big factor, and and it also goes back to who you know. So, for me, it's trust. Who you trust, and how. Mm. You trust. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now you chose to go into contemporary gospel. Music was that a was that a personal decision? Did you have to struggle with that, or was that just the next elevation of your music? I know you said you dabble with the jazz and this, that, and the other, but was that your next progression, or or uh, just just your testament? Well, the jazz was just something I played around with, but I grew up in, in the gospel realm, and. Mm-hmm. I say contemporary gospel because it has a more, it still has like a jazzy feel, more upbeat. Um, you can still incorporate some worship um, more so than the the old time religion. Mm-hmm. So that's where I derive from that. Okay, okay. Well, cool beans. Now, uh, have you released product, product yet? Do you have anything online at CD Baby or Amazon or any of those places, iTunes, where folks can find you? Absolutely. I have um, released the first project. Um, you can find it at CD Baby, Amazon, and iTunes, all the social media networks. Um, if you're local, you can get it at God's World and at um, Great Grace Bookstore. Grace oh, you over there in Greater Grace. Yes. Oh, I all right. Greater Emmanuel, but I also have some colleagues at uh, Greater Grace, and they were gracious enough to allow me to have my product there. So that is absolutely fantabulous. All right, all right. Well, give everybody 
uh, your uh, your social media contacts, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, all your girl, it's so many of them things. Let anybody know where they can contact you. I'm at Freddie Renee Project at Gmail, uh, Facebook, uh, Freddie Renee dot com, and that's it. All right, all right. I am looking forward to seeing you when I get into town. You as well. Because, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I I get excited when I hear good singing and carrying on. And see, there was a couple of little cutesy, cutesy little doo-wops you just did in that particular song that we just heard. And see, I'm very animated. So, honey, if you tickle my, if you t- I'm a hitter, so I can't stay close to you. I'm going to have to stay in the back. Because I'm one of them old-time church children that throw shoes and stuff. And I can't be up on you because I've been done slapped you. All right, man. So, okay. <laughs> right. So, you know, I can't do that, but you will hear my mouth all the way in the corner, honey. You know, I'm, I'm one of them kind of children. Okay. And and I got to make sure I got my handkerchief with me and stuff, too, so I can wave. And, because I, if I can fling my chief, my kerchief, honey, I'm good because I can't, I can't do nothing open hand. Okay. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> So cutesy, cutesy, cutesy. That there would be wonderful. So lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait for you to see you and for you to to do your thing there, honey. She's going to be there at Five More Artists. And let me take this time here. Uh, here's question number one for those of you who are listening and want to come on board, honey. And I'm going to have you to call in at three four seven two zero five nine one eight three. That's three four seven. Two zero five nine one eight three. The first question is which artist do I call my little big sister who has been on the program more than once? Oh, oh, can I answer? Can I answer? (laughs) Which artist do I call my little big sister who has been on the program more than once? That's question number one, 347-205-9183. That there, if you call in and give me the correct answer, you will win a ticket to come and see the Five More Artists show and you get to meet me in person uh, at this particular show. So uh, this is Saturday. This coming Saturday, September 7th, oh, excuse me, oh, I had a deep cough, September 7th, 2013, of course, showtime starts at 7 p.m., we're running until midnight, we have a plethora of events for you to to, uh, to come and partake, and also we're going to have some wonderful art that will be for sale. Let me stress that, honey, not only are you coming to look at the artwork or whatever, you also get a chance to buy Okay, to purchase so that you could take home and to decorate your office, your home, uh, the kids' bedroom. There's going to be something there for everything and everyone, okay? So uh, I do want to take this time, and uh, when I was last there, we had one vendor there who had made some wonderful, wonderful pottery and things. And it had it was brought to my attention that he had made his transition. So we're going to be – we're so sorry – for his loss, that he's not going to be able to be here with us anymore to display and and to say he had some beautiful, beautiful pottery pieces, and I am so outdone that I did not I was I wasn't able to to buy at the time because I didn't have enough enough uh, space to to bring it back because I'm traveling back to Atlanta and I didn't have any more room and trying to and I didn't think to just buy this ship because I was that wasn't in my in my mind frame at the time. And uh, then he broke my face because he went to high school with my mother. Ha! Okay, he said, I knew your mother before she knew you. I was like, oh, you're going to keep me with that one. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. (laughs) But That was um, Ulysses Hollowell Jr. Yeah, Ulysses, I was just ready to say that, Ulysses Hollowell, and I didn't, I forgot his last name, so thank you. Ulysses Hollowell Jr., we we do celebrate you, and we lift you up in spirit, and know that you will be there with us uh, in spirit as we 
partake of this particular year here in 2013. So it saddens me that he's not going to be there this particular time. So, um, and not to go into this whole melancholy thing like this. However, uh, it also saddens me that um, the city of Detroit, or well, the city of Highland Park, rather, that's, let me be very specific, uh, was unable or did not feel the need to donate the artifacts that the um, that the the uh, uh, Highland Park High School had. That we had the largest collection that was rivaled by everyone in the world uh, dealing with Black history and things of that nature. Uh, and instead of donating that to the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. They chose to destroy all of that memorabilia. So in lieu of that, uh, dealing with the show this year, Peter, you know, what are your feelings on that? Because, again, this goes back to that whole keeping art integrity and things of that nature. What are your What are your thoughts yes, on that? Certainly did play a part um, in choosing – the Charles H. Wright Museum, because that's one of the things that we have to do as well is preserve our history. Uh, we have to support one another and preserve our history. No one else is going to do it. You know, we keep sitting around waiting on someone to come in on a big white horse and think that they're going to save us. No one is going to save us but ourselves. Say and that. so this is, this is one of the reasons why I feel that I have to do my part, and I encourage the artists who come on board for Five More Artists to do their part by donating a portion of the proceeds that they sell to a worthy charity. We can't depend on the city. The state's not doing anything. Hell, excuse my French, but not even the president is coming in here and trying to save anybody. But GM. Mm. And then GM is turning around who are they saving themselves, yeah. you know? So we have to do it. You know, we mm. have to take care of our neighborhoods. We can't get trash picked up. Then we pick it up ourselves. Right. You know, these are the things that, that we have to do. And I think it was an absolute atrocity uh, when I found out about all of the artifacts, all of the history from videotapes to the old school CDs, VHS tapes, not only were they th thrown in the trash bin, before they were thrown in the trash bin, they were smashed. Wow. And then thrown into the trash bin. And when the community uh, began to uprise and discovered what was happening, uh, people began to go and rummage through the trash and try to save uh, whatever it was that they could. Well, when they discovered that, they put locks on them to prevent people from saving their history. Mm, so, mm, again, mm. you know, again, no one is going to save us, not the emergency manager that we currently have in just about every city uh, in Michigan, every urban city, should I say, in Michigan. So it's really up to us. So I have to do my part. You have to do your part. We all have to do our part. And we may not have much. But from what little we do have, we have to give, and we have to support one another. Otherwise, we're just not going to make it. So I wanted to do my part this year in making sure that African American history is preserved. Now, I may not be able to donate millions of dollars, but I will donate what I certainly can, and I know that that will be a help. Okay. Okay. Well, all righty then. All righty then. And so let me say I this. I also want uh, to say go ahead. in regards to the artwork being sold, we want to stress that it is affordable artwork that is being sold. And in addition, uh, for Renee, the Freddie Renee CD will be on hand for those who would like to purchase it that night. Okay. Okay. Cutesy, cutesy. Cutesy, cutesy. 
Love, I will be there as well. With You've heard the commercial from my book. I'm going to have copies of my book there as well that I will be autographing and carrying on uh, for anyone who wants to come on board and do that. Plus, we'll be doing a live broadcast from Five More Artists. Dishing Tea with Big Meats will be in the house, and we'll be doing a live broadcast feed that will be posted up on AtlantaLGBT.com. Uh, so that there is going to be very special. So come on out. You get to meet me, talk and laugh, and, and kiki on the radio with me. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. So it's going to be a fun, 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 fun field evening. And, uh, yes, I, I hope you guys will – uh, come on out. Now, uh, Now you still have time to get advanced tickets. You can get advanced tickets, honey, up until possibly, uh, I'm going to say about 5 okay. o'clock Saturday. Because at that, be after Friday. that, you know, Friday. Uh, Friday? Oh, okay. So we're yeah. going up until Friday to get advanced tickets. So advanced tickets are now at $25, okay? So uh, give. Uh, you can call at 248 Six eight eight five one seven eight for for ticket information to find out, or if you know someone who's going to be in the show, perhaps they may have tickets on them um, that you can buy tickets from. Or if not, then it'll be thirty dollars at the door. So yeah, you can come on in as a walk in, or whatever. There'll be thirty dollars at the door. Okay. So uh, Peter, add, go on. Ticket, tickets are also available at the Charles H. Wright Museum. So you can go there and pick up advanced tickets for $25. They're also available at Joe's Gallery, which is located on Detroit's Avenue of Fashion. So those are two physical locations that you can go to, or you can call again, 248-688-5178, and we'll make sure that you get your ticket. All right. Okay. Now, oh, uh I'm sorry, Big Meat. Let me just say this about your book because you were talking about your book a little bit earlier, um, Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey. Let me just say I read the book. I purchased the book. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, book filled with uh, spiritual upliftment. I use that book almost daily uh, to get me through it <laughs> sitting right here on my desk. So when I need uh, some upliftment, I go straight to certain chapters which are, which relate to what I'm going through that particular day. So I just want to say your book will also be there for sale. You'll be mm -hmm. there autographing. And it has also been, and you may not know this, I don't know if we discussed this, but has been an inspiration for several uh, art pieces which I have created. So I just want to say thank you so much uh, for Epiphanies Along the Spiritual Journey. Oh, no, you've never told me that. Really? Yes, certainly. Oh, child, okay. <laughs> I don't know these pieces. I have to see these pieces. Oh, child, okay, wait a minute. Let's see, y'all know I get, I'm sensitive, honey. You can't be doing that because, you know, I cry at the drop of a dime, honey. You can't do that now. <laughs> well, please don't get them a tissue, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, see, that made me forget. I was, finished, I was. Oh, I know where I was going. I was going to say, um, let everyone know who are our artists and who are our featured artists on the program. Okay, certainly. Uh, we have artist Jean Poulet, who is originally uh, from Canada but lives uh, currently has her studio in uh, Livonia, Michigan. Uh, she actually uh, suffers from dys dyslexia, um, and that is basically the catalyst of her work. Uh, oh, wow. And she's become oh, wow. very well known uh, for producing these wonderful, wonderful pieces. Uh, we also have artist uh, Troy Weaver, uh, of course, Art by Soul, Miss Sharon Williams Dean, who we spoke of earlier, uh, Mr. Walter Bailey, who produces some phenomenal work. Uh, Anna Coleman as well, uh, Nina Griffith Myers, who is uh, featured as an emerging artist. This is, uh, I believe, her first show, and we are certainly happy to have her on board. Uh, we have Adoa Menuza, uh, who is uh, a wonderful abstract artist. You're, you're talking about abstract work. Uh, she's got some for you. And, of course, uh, myself, Peter Jackson, uh, we'll all be together 
uh, raising money for the Charles H. Wright Museum. Well, all righty then. All righty then. And I want to oh, give I'm, a shout out. I'm sorry. Go this ahead. One, our special special guest artist, Nzinga, who has uh, I'm one of one of her biggest fans as well. Uh, just some remarkable, remarkable artwork. Oh wow! Okay, so you said that like that. Oh my! I I got to see her work. I've got to see her work because okay. I'm very I have, I, uh, featured on uh, on on the where you show the pictures there scrolling through. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the image uh, of the African girl with the dots on her face. That's her. Oh yes, remarkable. And and the re- most remarkable thing to me is she works in oil which is uh, a little bit more difficult to work in than acrylic or any other medium. I try to stay away from oil because it's just it's oil is something else. And you have to wait for uh, any mistake that you may make to dry before you can go back over and make corrections, et cetera. So for her to be producing all of her work in oil, I just have the utmost respect for her. And to turn out the, the pieces that she's turning out is just, Amazing. Oh wow! You know, let me. That, that brings about an interesting question. Is there uh, does does there become a rivalry of sort in the art world due to the different mediums? Because you know, say for instance, you know, as an actor and as a singer and carrying on, because everybody got different ranges, and I don't know how do you compete when you got a soprano and a tenor trying to say I could sing better than you, I could sing better than you. You know, you ha- always have that kind of rivalry. Is there that same kind of rivalry because you do pencil or this one does charcoal and this one does oil? Is that it, does, does that? I'm sure it does, but is that something to that that is very prevalent in the in the art world? You know, um, I've only been doing this for eight years, so I can only speak on my experience. But from what I have experienced, um, I haven't run across any rivalry. You know, we're all out there doing our thing. And, again, I have to say, you know, your talent is your talent. You know, you may have a talent for oil. That's not my talent. I can work in a brick. I can work in pastel. I can work in charcoal. Um, My work is also combined with digital imagery. So uh, my work is my work, and any other artist's work is their work, you know. So, I, I haven't really run across any uh, anything you can do, I can do better scenario. Um, I think as artists, uh, we all try to pretty much stick together. Um, there are several artists who also combine their talents uh, to come up with extraordinary pieces. So I, I haven't really experienced that. Now, if you ask someone who's been doing this for maybe 30, 40 years or something, Maybe they may have experienced that, but I'm pretty much still young uh, in the art world, and uh, mm-hmm. fortunately, I haven't run across anything but camaraderie. So, I guess I'm blessed so far. Okay. All right. Well, one more time, give everybody the information for this coming Saturday. Well, that's the Five More Artists 2013 talking about a revolution, uh, an evening, an affordable evening of art, jazz, and theater. We want you to come out, explore the arts, have a wonderful time with us. We'll be at Maggie Lee's Community Center, which is located at 7700 Puritan in Detroit. That's between Wyoming and Livernois. The zip code over there is 48238 um, from 7 p.m. to midnight on September the 7th. Advanced tickets are $25. Again, you can call 248-688-5178. And we encourage you to get your tickets in advance. However, there will be door tickets available. Uh, should we be able to hold the capacity. So it's best uh, if you get your ticket in advance. And we look forward to seeing you out there. All right, all right. Well, having said that, honey, I'm very excited because, darlings, you guys are going to get a treat. 
uh, all the way around, and I'm very excited to present to you an excerpt from my original piece called No Time for the Pain. Uh, that's coming to theaters very, very soon. And uh, you get to get a glimpse into the world of uh, Danielle, Eric, and Stephen. And uh, we're going to do this thing. It's got to be right, baby. It's got to be right. I need to put that on the T-shirt. <laughs> okay. So without any further ado, my darling, let me thank you for coming on. I can't. I'll see you in the in the what the early afternoon tomorrow when I get into town, and then uh, we'll go on from there. So, honey, we're figuring to do this thing the right way. Okay. Okay. Now let me also say that if you need more information about the show, you can visit uh, www.theright.org. That is the uh, website for the Charles H. Wright Museum. All of the the information uh, is located there. And you can also get some of the history of the Charles Wright Museum, explore uh, the different uh, programs and stuff that they have available uh, while you're there. So we encourage you to visit www.theright.org, get more information on Five More Artists 2013. All right, and there you have it. So without any further ado, my darling, let me get you back to your day as you're still preparing, and then let me finish packing the stuff over here because I got to pack. I got to make sure these bags are not over 50 pounds. Huh? <laughs> and let, then, me uh, get... thank you. let me just say thank you uh, to Miss Freddie Renee for coming in today and for providing us with such wonderful music. We look forward to having her uh, in this year's show, I also want to thank some of our sponsors, uh, Sherwood Forest Art Gallery, Joe's Gallery, uh, Cubby's Printing. I would also like to thank uh, the, the Charles Wright Museum uh, for all of their hard work and diligence. And also thank you, Big Meat, for having us on the show, WHPR TV 33. Shout outs to Tyrone Mitchell from WatchDetroit.com. Go there and see a video uh, of five more artists. We're currently their number one uh, top viewed video. So please visit oh, www. The watch. Uh, I'm sorry, watchdetroit.com. All right. Well, you know what? Having said that, I'm going to let you go here, but I'm going to end on this note here. Just listen to this song. It was it says everything about who we are. And I think it's very appropriate since the Charles H. Wright uh Museum of African American History is the 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 charity. Why not go out with Esperanza Spalding, honey, saying we are black gold. So honey, if, you may now finish your crumpets because the tea has been dished and you've been dishing tea, darlings, with Big Me. Tell you, if you love me, tell a friend. If you hate me, tell an enemy, but do know this one way, shape, style, form of fashion. This thing here will move forward.
All right, all right, all right. Now, I just had someone come up in here, and I was about to end this, but I see that they put their hand up right away, so I believe this might be one of the other artists. So 313-454-313-454. Hello, my darling. Nine, You're fishing to yes. the big meat. Nina. Hello? Hello, it's Nina. Yeah. Hi, Nina. How are you? I figured I I almost closed off the show, but I said, no, let me play this song and let me follow my spirit. And I'm glad that you okay. were able to come on in, honey. Yes, my darling. So what's going on with you, Miss Nina Myers Griffin, honey? She's one of the she's going to be one of the artists that's going to be there at Five More Artists. So my darling, tell us a little bit more about you and what you're going to be presenting. Oh, I'm um, a mother, a student at School Craft College. I'm working under Chef Marcus right now. Um, I'm at school. <laughs> he let uh-huh. me allow me to come out and speak to you. Um, like I said, I'm. I'm presenting some pastels and some sketches, um, um, some nudes, some stills. Um, Oh, really? This is my debut. (laughs) Oh, this is your debut. So tell us about what that feeling is, honey, because Saturday is just a few days away, honey. What is that for you? Oh, it feels great. Um, I'm really thankful for uh, Farrell's treasure box for allowing me to, this opportunity. Um, like I said, this is my debut, and a lot of my professors are telling me that I have hidden talent and that I should explore the art world. Mm-hmm. Well, as you know, I'm going to school for a chef. I'm, a, I'm going to school to be a chef. So uh-huh. I figured I can kind of um, combine the two. Oh, you okay. know, uh, yeah. Put my, my art design mine into my foods. Oh, I did uh, that. It's, it's all about presentation, honey. Now, that's the first rule that's teaching. It, it's all about presentation. You can burn yes. something up, honey, but if you present it right, honey, you say, okay, this is a char. <laughs> right. <laughs> or blackened sea fish, honey. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. There's a it. rainbow coalition it. on there. See there? <laughs> So now, with this being, okay, uh, with your art, uh, if you were to describe your own work, well, how would you describe it? Well, it's it's not far-fetched. I have a couple of them that are, um, what do they say, what do they call it, where you have to look at it and each one see something different? Abstract. Mm-hmm. Abstract. Right. I have, I have a couple of abstracts. And then, but then basically, I uh, have some nudes. How you doing? I have some nudes, uh, uh, models, uh, uh, my own models, and then I have um, pastels, uh, still lifes. Uh, you know, like I have one one picture that's called a table for one, and uh-huh. it has a bowl and a plate. But it's the it's the scenery, it's the background. Like I'm not looking for no one else to come. It's just me, uh, uh-huh. with one cup, one bowl. One bottle of wine, one flower, you know. Um, then I have one that's, um, it's like a, a young lady just relaxing, getting out the shower, sitting in a chair with her legs folded, you know, just chilling, you know. Like I'm, I'm cooling out, you know. I have uh-huh, nothing else uh-huh. to do but relax, you know. So it's, I guess that's how I could describe. I mean, that's what I was thinking when I drew it. I don't know. Uh huh. <laughs> Now you know what if you now now with your collection does your collection I see that I see a theme here as far as your work being one of 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 serenity and being one of peace and one of of uh you know basically solitude and and right. rejuvenation if, if you know right. just okay listening and I haven't seen your work yet exactly <laughs> wow, that's gonna be hot, girl. See, and I haven't even seen it yet. And I'm, I'm already there. As you were describing all that, I'm very, I'm a visionary, right. so I can, I can see that as you're doing. I'm like, oh, that sounds cute. Okay, yeah, I'm there. Okay, I'm there. Right. You got any male news, girl? I got some, but I didn't put none in this show. Oh, damn it! Uh, you know, I want to see how I got. You I better got bring, bring your book. 
you bring your <laughs> book so I can flip through the thing book, honey, be like, okay, now that should be framed, honey, and put up on my wall. And I, that got was- a, I got a male nude. I got a male nude that's, that's uh, a, a, like a man in despair. Where mm. he's, he's smoking a cigarette. He's sitting there naked, but he's smoking a cigarette. He got a bottle of wine in one hand and a cigarette in his mouth. But his head is down. He got on sunglasses, but his hair is like, this has been a long day. <laughs> Girl, yeah, you okay? Bring your book. I want to see that. That sounds cute. <laughs> all right, all right. Now see, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, I see. You sound so. See, I I can pitch it. I'm already there with that one. Oh, girl, yeah, 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 yeah. You bring you bring what you gonna present, and then you bring your book for me, honey. We're starting talking in the corner somewhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you were able to come on here. Okay, please. I'm serious. Bring it so I can see what this is. Cause child, I'm telling you, girl. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, Alrighty. do that, and uh, you get on back to class. I'm glad they let you come on out for this child, cause yeah, you go on back to class, and then we'll see you. Yeah, Saturday. I gotta give a shout out to my instructors, though, Chef, Chef Marcus, Chef Gabriel, Chef Levin, all of them is excellent chefs, and y'all should come down and eat at the Main Street Cafe and American Harvest at Schoolcraft College on Six Mile Hackney. Oh, okay. Oh, you over there? Okay. Yes. All right, well, cool, cool, cool. I didn't know they did that for the students. That they had the restaurant over there. I ain't been home in a while. I, I, okay, okay, that's cute. Well, all right, Schoolcraft College. Okay, shout out to Schoolcraft College. Okay, they get free advertisement today. We'll talk about publicity later. All uh-huh. right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I told, my, I told my professor I would do that so he could let me out of class. Right. Okay. Well, tell him. Okay. Tell him. Tell him. I would. I would see him when I come in. Anyway. Okay. I will. You get back to class, thank baby. You. And thank you for coming on. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, baby. You have a blessed day now. You too. Okay. Right. All right, Miss Nina Myers Griffin had it. Okay, now she just did that for me with her artwork and how she just described all that, honey. That sounds fabulous. Wow, oh, that table yes, for we one, certainly, honey. We certainly have uh, a wonderful array of art that is going to be presented. Uh, so again, we encourage you to come out, uh, view the beautiful artwork. Uh, and take advantage of the affordability and help support a charitable cause all while you're doing that. Exactly. Wow. We now see. I almost closed that out after Miss Esperanza Spalding. However, uh, that's okay. That's okay. All the music that I played today, honey, if you want to get a copy of it, it's available on Amazon and also on iTunes and uh, up on YouTube. They got YouTube videos for this music. So uh, take that over there. So without any further ado, let me get back to packing because, child, believe it or not, I still got to run to the store to go get something. Ain't that nothing? So let me do all that, and I will see you in Detroit come this Saturday. No one called to answer this question, so I still got four tickets. So when we get down here to Detroit, honey, I, I may have to just do something there. So uh, we'll go from there, and, uh, yeah, so without any further ado, honey, you guys have a blessed day, and I will see you guys in Detroit. This I'm coming in tomorrow, so y'all can start looking for me there tomorrow. All right, until then, ciao. Ciao. At Carrabba's Italian Grill, people always seem to be saying, Wow! Especially now, because you can take home our delicious sautéed to order spaghetti and homemade meatballs made with our family recipe absolutely free. Homemade spaghetti and meatballs for free? Just wow! Order one of your Carrabba's favorites, Chicken Brian, Chicken Marsala, Polo Rosa Maria, or our Chicken Trio, and take home made-from-scratch spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow night's dinner free? Wow! Hurry into Carrabba's today and get free spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow. Limited time only, now through May 6th. Carrabba's Italian Worth talking about. At Carrabba's Italian Grill, people always seem to be saying, Wow! Especially now, because you can take home our delicious sautéed to order spaghetti and homemade meatballs made with our family recipe absolutely free. Homemade spaghetti and meatballs for free? Just wow! Order one of your Carrabba's favorites, Chicken Brian, Chicken Marsala, Polo Rosa Maria, or our Chicken Trio, and take home made-from-scratch spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow night's dinner free? Wow! Hurry into Carrabba's today and get free spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow. Limited time only, now through May 6th. Carrabba's Italian Worth talking about.